Well, you think about Larry Clisby. I've worked with him for 14 years on the radio network, but as a kid, you know, I grew up listening to Cliz. That's how far back he goes. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's show, the Boilermakers winning streak, currently now four after knocking off Ohio State last week. He's been with the program for over 40 years. He's outlasted uh, some coaches, certainly a lot of players, a lot of administrators. Yeah, he's been here a while. I like being part of sports, and uh, I don't play, and this is the closest you can get to playing. Now to Ben, shoots a three ball. Good! We have a tie game! When I get to do a game, I get to feel the emotion of the game. Purdue wins 70 to 69, the final score. For 40 years, I've been able to get the same feeling that those guys get. He's put in his, you know, almost his whole professional life, and he's given it to Purdue basketball. Now a shot by Thompson, a three. Good! He's hit another! While it is a job, certainly it means much more to him. You know, when the team wins, he's as excited as anyone involved with the team. And when the team loses, it hurts. He loses sleep over the losses just the way the coaches and players do. So it's definitely a lot more to him than just the play-by-play -play voice of the basketball team. Larry sits in the first seat on the bus, on the team bus. I don't know any radio guys who get the first seat. Normally it's the head coach. I mean, he watches film with us as a team. He's at practices. Three on the way. Bullseye! Bullseye is his call without question. Vince a three. Bullseye! It's the call that I think that everybody can identify with, and his call will be like, you know, a three ball from the corner. Bullseye! When you hear that, you're like, okay, Purdue's in pretty good shape because we just hit a big shot and, and good chance the momentum's on our side. One of those little, they're called GoPro cameras, like you put on your hat or whatever. They're going to put one right in front of you here today, so they'll be watching. I always joke with Cliz about, you know, hey, I don't know how many years you have left in your partner, and he always says something to the effect of, oh, I'll be here for a long, long time. But there was a time in June when I was really concerned about whether or not Cliz would, would still be with us. During the off season, my fiance, she noticed that that day I had slurred some words. So she called a friend of mine, my closest friend, and wanted to know, and he said, no, wait, now nah, nah, he, he could be having a stroke. So get him to the hospital and do it now. They wanted to run some preliminary tests. The ER doctor came back to me and just said, well, I have some bad news, and the bad news is that uh, you have brain cancer. And then two weeks later, I was given the uh, diagnosis that I had uh, lung cancer, four stage. We don't have much choice here. We either fight this thing or, or we die. When I got the phone call that, that Cliz had brain cancer, it was explained to me at the time, it was not looking good. When I called Cliz immediately afterwards, he did not sound good. As a matter of fact, it, it, he sounded so poorly on the phone that I I called my wife and said, I, you know, I need to go see Cliz immediately because I don't, know, I don't know how many more days he has left on this earth. My oncologist had me in his office a day after I got out of the hospital. I had to take radiology for the brain and we had 10 treatments in 10 days. And then uh, chemo. For the cancer treatments, they had to come up with a GoFundMe page to help cover those expenses. They started with, hey, let's have a goal of $10,000, and within about five minutes, Coach Painter had given $10,000. Uh, that just, that floored me, and then it was off. You know, we had, I've had like 4,000 people who've, who've either said something or donated or things of that nature and I just I just couldn't believe it especially when you get them from people you haven't heard from in a long time and the people that you've never heard from who have told you that uh, I've meant something to them and that really gets you going because you, you just don't realize that doing games you don't realize the people that you affect and there are a lot of them. 
The one thing I think Larry felt good about, and I think anybody who knows him felt good about, was the doctor said, you're not a typical 70-year-old. You know, you're very fit and active and alive, and um, so it gives yourself a, a pretty good chance at this. At the moment, I'm off the chemo, radiation I'm off. After six weeks or eight weeks, uh, we went in there and uh, I was down to about maybe 30% cancer in the areas that were more like 80 or 90%. So um, apparently something has worked to this point. But the problem is with this, you never know. How are you, buddy? Liz, how are you doing? Okay. Good. You don't know if this is your day or if it isn't, you know? From thinking in late June that, man, I, I don't know if Cliz will, will he even be alive come the start of basketball season to where he is now, you know, sitting there calling the games. And I think he would admit he's not the Cliz of old, but he's certainly much closer than he was, you know, four months ago. Are you feeling good now? Most of the time. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not as tired. Right now, with the exception of I can't get around as fast, everything else is the same. I talk the same. Got a lot of news. <laughs> and my brain is uh, processing it the same, so that's a good part. We we're worried about that. It's the greatest thrill in the world. I mean, this is what I do. I mean, I do this for a living, and I love doing it, and always have. I never wanted to quit. I'm 71. I'm, I realize that I'm at the end of the road, but get that first game done, and then and I had a lot of people say, hey, man, you're, you're back, you know? <laughs> I don't know what back means, but that, that, that was great. Great, 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 great feeling. <laughs>